Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And before I introduce my guest from down under in Melbourne, Australia, who is probably right now eating Tim Tams as I speak, my favorite biscuits in the whole world. I'm so jealous. I want to just mention to you that if you haven't done so already, register for the free web class on Flight School. It's awesome. Um, also, go to thelandgeek.com and download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. My last plug, I promise, and we're getting to my guest. If you're not automating your Craigslist ads, go to postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Uh, I am filling in for Scott Todd today. In case you don't know me, it's Mark Podolsky, the land geek. Let's talk about today's guest because he's kind of a brilliant marketer uh, in a futurist. Tim Reed from Tim, uh, I'm sorry, uh, from small business, bigmarketing.com is the founder and host of Australia and New Zealand's number one business and marketing podcast, the Small Business Big Marketing Show, which can also be found on all Virgin Australia domestic and international flights. So this guy knows how to get things done. So having launched this hit program seven years ago and with well over 300 episodes under his belt, it regular ranks on iTunes above the Australian Stock Exchange, Alan Jones, Tim Ferriss, and even outranks Harvard Business School as the number one business marketing podcast. I have a feeling we're going to learn something from Tim Reed today. Tim Reed, how are you? Mark, it is an absolute pleasure to be here. I never thought you were going to get to me, Mark. I thought you were going to introduce me and then say we haven't got any time for him. The show's over. But I am well. And a uh, little known fact, the, the wonderful chocolate biscuit, the Tim Tam, is actually named after me. I, you know what? I, immediately as soon as I saw you on Zoom, I knew... There's something about this guy that just, you know, really is just likable. You get that a lot, Tim. I like, like people just meet you're like, you're a likable guy. You want, you want to go out for a beer and a Tim Tam? And you're like, yeah. Well, God, beer and Tim Tams don't mix. Chocolate and beer, both yeah. good things, but uh, would never ever uh, consume both at the same time, you know? Right. That's true. That's true. So let's talk about you. Like, how did you become the biggest marketer down under i'll take that i'll take that look you know uh, it's a, how do i answer that in a, in a succinct way I, I was in market i was in corporate marketing for about 22 years i was trapped in the corporate cubicle uh, working on really big brands was learning a lot was an advertising guy i was the marketing manager for the australia's biggest travel agent got sick of the whole corporate thing and decided that what i needed to do was I love sharing my marketing knowledge with the smaller end of town, Mark. And when I did that, when I was in corporate, if I did meet a small business owner and give them some marketing advice, they really listened and they took action and they were appreciative. And I liked that. So I left corporate and I started my own marketing consultancy. And what I did, and I think there's a real learning here, is I started a podcast. Now, I'm not suggesting everyone go and start a podcast, but what that did for me was position me, position me rightly or wrongly as an expert. Um, fortunately, my podcast had found, and my show is called The Small Business Big Marketing Show, and it finds that intersection between educating people around marketing and entertaining them. And I think therein lies a little bit of magic, is finding what's your intersection. And for me, that really worked, because there's a lot of marketing shows out there, a lot of marketing podcasts, but um, I would argue that many just educate and I think as human beings, we like to be entertained. And I don't mean become a stand-up comedian, but you suggested I was likable. I think, you know, it's important in marketing to be likable. People buy from people. And, you know, so at the end of the day, podcast became successful. Seven years later, I'm still doing the show. It's on Virgin Airlines around Australia and internationally out of Australia. And the brand continues to grow. And, you know, to just to wrap that up, um, Someone's got to be the most helpful in your industry. And I've decided that's going to be me for small business owners and marketing in Australia. So there you go. And, and marketing is so big mm. and so competitive. I mean, there's got to be, you know, hundreds, if not thousands 
of marketing podcasts, right? Yeah. So when you first started, how did you break through the noise? How did you differentiate yourself as this, this expert, this, this guy that is sticky, you want to keep coming back to? And I know you mentioned the, the entertainment aspect of it, but I would think that marketers as a crew are pretty entertaining people to begin with. They're creative, no? Uh, well, it may be. I think it's a generalization. But in answer to two questions there, the first question is how, for me, it was a podcast. How did I break through the clutter? I, I, I started to podcast. And again, I'm not here saying every, every small business owner should podcast. What every small business owner should recognize, and let's talk mindset here, is that the marketing world's changed, right? The landscape is now favoring those with modest budgets, not big budgets. And what that allows us to do, if you really understand that, is that you can now go and create your own media platform. That might be a podcast, it might be a YouTube channel, it might be a blog, a forum, a Facebook page. What, whatever platform you choose, you can now own that media. And I think that's incredible. I think it's incredible that you and I have both got our own shows. You know, that wasn't going to happen 10 years ago. That was a lot harder to make happen 10 years ago. Now we can both confidently stand up and say, we have our own show. I'm very proud. I call my show the Small Business Big Marketing Show, not the Small Business Big Marketing Podcast, because despite it being a podcast, it just elevates it a little bit more. And I just find that incredible that we can do that. And so what the mindset shift is, is that for someone marketing something, sure, go and continue to buy 30 second spots on the local radio station. That's leasing space from someone else. You get this, you're a real estate guy. Um, sure, go and buy an ad in the local paper. That's leasing space from somewhere else, from someone else. Continue to do that, but also understand that you can create the media platform now, have complete control of it if you are consistent, if you create engaging content, therein lies the challenge. Um, you're you're going to win. You've got to win. Yeah, I mean, it's... I, I, I think it's, it's really one of those things where what you said really rings true is the consistency showing up every single day or every single week so that your audience begins to know you're going to count on you. Like I'm, I'm guilty of not showing up consistently, let's say for live streaming, right? Why? Like I, why? why? Mm. It's a good, you know, I probably just because I don't deem it as important as let's say the podcast or frontier properties or some of the other things you know loan geek or some of the other things that i'm, I'm working on at that moment and the day gets away from me and i feel like oh now i'm in you know, i got three kids and now i'm into family time and i don't want to live stream during that time just because yeah. of like privacy and this and that so i have like this little window of time to do it and if i miss it cool. And, and, and I get that now. And I think the, the trick there is to set expectations with your audience. If you happen to have said to your audience, your tribe, your people, hey, I'm going to be live streaming every day and you're not, then that's disrespectful. If you haven't set that expectation, say live streaming, streaming is one of those things I'm going to do every now and then, then that's cool. Yeah. So I think thankfully I haven't set that expectation, I think. But you're right. I mean, being consistent and, and actually being um, you know, one of those people that, you know, if you say you're going to do it, you're going to do it and then not lose that trust. So, so for you, Tim Reed, um, what, you know, besides not being consistent, not showing up, like what are some of the other mistakes you see new marketers making today? Oh, wow. Yeah. Where do we start? Um, consistency, thinking they need to do everything, uh, thinking that they need to be, you know, um, on Facebook, have a podcast, do videos, have a website, get a brochure, do business cards, go to networking events, run some ads, you know, like my view, and I'm, I'm going to talk to your audience that is the small business owner, even maybe the solopreneur, the micropreneur. Um, my advice, choose a platform like the ones I listed earlier and own it, like own it. Like I've owned podcasting in my space for seven years. Um, people go, why don't you do video? Why don't you blog more? Because podcasting's been really good to me and I don't need to, right? So I'm owning that. So there's a mistake there. Um, another mistake around doing it all is that, you know, there is this new world of outsource. It's not even you anymore, but the ability to outsource stuff and get off, I say, get off the tools. I mean, if, if you are going to podcast, for example, please don't get stuck 
in the minute of editing and uploading your show notes and doing all that stuff that you could be paying someone a lot less money for uh, than what you're worth. So figure out what your hourly rate is and then go and employ people who are significantly less than that to do the kind of process driven work. Um, that's why I've Things, uh, because in Australia, so many small business owners hurting because the cost of doing business here is astronomical. Um, so I'm like, guys, go and offshore some stuff. So that's another mistake. Um, but one other mistake that I see, you know, people starting off in business make is not respecting marketing. You know, <laughs> marketing from I've I've interviewed 334 successful small business owners on the Small Business Big Marketing Show, and I can tell you that one thing that links them all is that they respect marketing. They see the power of it. It's like oxygen for a business marketing if you get it right. So don't kind of put marketing off. And just to wrap all that up, Mark, you know, marketing's such a broad term. You know, it's like, what is marketing? I, I would just say marketing's everything and everything is marketing from the business card to your website to how you present yourself, how you dress, how you talk, um, the copy on your brochure, it, everything. So respect the power of marketing no and you know it's so funny because um you know sales gets a bad rap right like you can't go to harvard business school and take a class on sales now you can take a class on marketing right but not on sales now i think the two go hand in hand you've got to generate interest and then once you generate that interest you have to have a lever in place to then follow through and, and exchange that value right mm -hmm. but what's interesting about marketing if you don't have the right mindset is that if if you're not having that exchange of value, like what you said, right, you're edutaining people and you're giving them that value for free. And now all of a sudden they get to know you after a few podcast episodes, they know you, they like you, they trust you. What happens is I want more Tim Reed, right? And then once I get more Tim Reed, I want more Tim Reed. And then I'm like, well, what, you know, and then you just send out an email and say, Hey, you know, I'm gonna have this live event and I'm gonna sell a ticket and you know, I would be Tim Reed for, you know, live in, in Melbourne and it's like a big deal. And now all of a sudden you've monetized it, but you really, you know, it's just a fancy word for saying, look, I've created this value and, and now I'm exchanging it, right? Is that, is that how you see it? Yeah, yeah, it is. And, and, and that you talk about marketing and sales. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm a fan of sales because it's the critical success factor. I'm not very good at sales. That's why I spend a lot of time on marketing. And the type of marketing that I spend a lot of time on is what I call helpful marketing. And helpful marketing generates warm leads. So therefore the sales process becomes a whole lot easier. And you know, for example, I'll give you the example of helpful marketing. Again, is my podcast. So then people call me and I get phone calls from people saying, hey, listen, you don't know me but I know you, I feel like I know you. I've been listening to your show for three, four, five years. Um, do you mind if I call you Timbo? My name's Tim, but I call myself Timbo. So there's that, that warmness in their approach. So all of a sudden the sales models flipped instead of me cold calling, I'm getting these warm calls from people that I don't know, but they feel as though they know me. And that in itself is pretty cool. And um, again, you know, people don't ring you up and say, hey, you know, love the ads around the radio. It just doesn't happen, you know, but they're going to ring you up and say, I love that episode you did of the podcast. So um, both marketing and sales, mission critical. Um, uh, don't stress if you're not good at one, but good at the other, you know? Yeah. So if I'm a small business owner mm. and I, go, I come to you and say, here, Tim, here's a million dollars. Will you, will you consult with me? <laughs> right. And you say, yeah, you know, I'll do it. Um, and, and the first question might be, you know, you get to know my business a little bit. And then I say, Tim, look, I only got, I got a, you know, I got a small marketing budget and I can only hit one platform today, right? Is there a platform that you'd say, okay, with a small marketing budget, this is what I would recommend you do as a small business owner. Or is the question bad? Does it just, is it so dependent on your business? Yeah. Am I, am I, it's a, it's a bad question. So what would be a better question? Well, first of all, a million bucks is a lot of money. I think it is. Over here it is. Is, is a million bucks still a lot of money uh, in Phoenix, Arizona? It is. It is. <laughs> That's how valuable you are, Tim. I just assume. Yeah, yeah correct. You know, um, I, I think because there is so much you could do, um, there are sort of certain fundamentals that you want to get in place. So 
there's a great marketing concept, sort of marketing 101, which says get your message right first before you worry about where to put it, right? So I see a lot of business owners say, I'm going to get on Twitter. I'm going to get a fandangled new website. I'm going to start an amazing video strategy. And I'm like, that's cool. That's cool. But what are you going to say? Let's go back and put those ideas on ice for the moment and figure out what you're going to say. So that, that's around getting your pitch right. What do you do? You know, I can say I'm a marketing guy. I actually prefer to say I show small businesses how to be resistible. And people go, oh, they sort of stop for a minute and go, you show small businesses how to be irresistible. I'd like to be irresistible. How do you show, how do you make small business? Oh, oh, cool, I'm glad you asked. And then I can go into some detail about explaining that in a more, in a more rational way. But I've kind of hit them up first with a, a, an emotional kind of pitch. So it's getting your pitch right. It's about understanding your brand. So as someone starting out, get really, really clear on who are your people, right? Um, many business another trap we fall into as business owners is that we want to appeal to everyone but i would argue that trying to be everything to everyone you end up being nothing to no one you got to stand for something so get clear on what it is you want to stand for yeah i remember dan like kennedy yeah but, but i remember dan kennedy saying you know if you're not um if you're not offending somebody by noon you're not working hard enough totally totally and that's and that's being that's a bit of showmanship in there. I don't know whether we need to offend people, but you know, I, I openly say my, I have the thing called an editorial mission and that editorial mission shapes what I podcast about, what I speak about on stage, what I write about in my blogs, um, what I talk about, what interviews I accept to do. My editorial mission is it's a three question approach. What have you got to offer to who and what outcome can they expect? So my editorial mission for the small business, big marketing show and brand is marketing tips and tricks. That's what I've got to offer for who small service based business owners. What are they going to get uh, to generate more inquiry? So that middle bit, small service based business owners, people are going to be listening to me who I know listen to me who own, who are product based marketers who are industrial marketers, who aren't small service-based business owners, but I'm not alienating them because they still like what I've got to say um, because marketing principles apply right across the board no matter who you are. But when I'm speaking and thinking about who I'm speaking to, it's small service-based business owners. So going back to that idea of get clear on your brand, who are you talking to, get, understand these people at, a, at an emotional level. Not, you know, demographic is okay, understanding how old they are, where they live, their gender, their income, their education status. That's kind of interesting, but it doesn't tell you a lot about those people. What does tell us a lot about a person is what keeps them up at night? What problems have they got that you can solve, that your business can solve? How do they feel about your industry um, at a more emotional level? I keep using this word emotion quite in, uh, purposely, Mark, because um, emotion is a very powerful way of getting inside a person's head and into their heart, you know? So um, that's what I would do with your bloke with the million dollars. Uh, first, first and foremost, I'd start by getting clear on their brand, uh, understanding them. And then at some point, you know, I'd say, yeah, I'd get a website, you know, do, tick the website box, a good website. Um, get all your other little marketing touch points in place that you need, whether it be signage or stationery or whatever, and all those kind of fundamentals. And then start to look around as to, is this person going to be good on video? Are they going to be a good audio sort of podcasting person? Are they better off as a blogger? Should we get them on the speaking circuit because they're really great presenters? Um, or maybe should we just run an ad advertising campaign? So long answer to a good question. No, which you actually created yourself because I, I started off with a bad question, but you know, basically the way you rephrase it was, you know, know your market. That's, that's the, that's the question, right? If you can't do marketing, if you don't know your market and the only way to know your market is to actually, you know, start talking to prospective customers and finding out what you said, what keeps them up at night, right? What are their fears? What are their ambitions? What emotionally, um, you know, connects you with them 
and and then you can speak to them in a way that creates value. But if you're talking about apples and they're interested in oranges, it doesn't matter if you're the greatest marketer in the world. You're talking to the wrong people, right? You know, imagine you're absolutely right. And imagine writing a letter to someone. Imagine I said to you, hey, Mark, go and write a letter to someone, will you? And you'd go, uh, yeah, but to who? Oh, good question. Good question. Um, can you write it to my um, 60-year-old aunt who lives on the coast and is having trouble sleeping at night? <laughs> now, now you know what, I don't know why she'd be having trouble sleeping at night because she lives on the coast, but you're right. Um, but now you know what you could write in that letter, right? So getting clear on who your people are, once you're clear on that, and I mean at a deeper level, uh, like I just described, then a lot of your marketing can fall into place. Yeah, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's, it's so, it's so, it's, it seems simple, mm. but it's not simple. I mean, to, to really delve deep into somebody's psyche, right? It isn't easy. Like you, you can't just talk to one person. You got to talk to a lot of people. You got to re, I mean, it's just getting that, those fundamentals, asking those questions over and over and over again and finding out, you know, what, yeah, yeah. what they want. Well, Ed, I mean, whilst I, I always get scared when people say it's not simple because you and I are right now are talking to business owners who are trying to um, grapple with their marketing. Let's just make, I'm going to say it's not as hard as you think it is and start, start. Don't be overwhelmed by the fact that we've covered a lot of ground in this chat and there are various things that you should do. Um, just start because, again, of the 334 successful business owners that I've interviewed, another thing that links them all is their ability to be productive and, and to avoid the perfection. Um, I, I really admire that in all these people that I speak to. I just think, wow, you really just took action, didn't you? You didn't wait for it to be perfect. You didn't wait for all the ducks to be in a row. You actually made a decision. This is what I'm going to do and we'll fix it as we go. And I really like that. I really admire that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, it, it is all about taking massive action. Um, all right. Well, now, Tim, I'm going to call you Timbo. Hey. Is that, is, that too, is, that, is that a bad boundary? Did I, did I cross a line? No, nah, look, uh, we've stared at each other in the eye now for about 33 minutes. So, you know, I feel uh, like I know you, brother. All right. All right, Timbo. Here we go. I don't even know if I'm saying, I got I to gotta listen to the podcast now. So, um, yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, I'm going to ask you for your tip of the week a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. I mean, we were given, you've already given tons of tips, but do you have like one? My, my tip for the week for your listeners um, they are right now either holding it and using it or it's in their pocket or handbag and it's their smartphone, right? Now, and this, yeah, yeah, totally, there it is. And like, you know, this thing that I'm holding, an iPhone 6S in my case, this is a marketing machine that we all take for granted. Poorly named, phone. Who uses the phone? This is a video camera. It's got a stills camera. It's got a voice recorder. It's got social, the ability for social media marketing, the ability to do email marketing. I mean, this is an incredible device. And my tip of the week is to understand just how much marketing, helpful marketing you can do. If as a small business owner, um, let's, let's, I'm gonna use a real estate agent as an example. Is that cool? Is that a good, is that a good kind of example to use for your people, Mark? No, I, I think it's a great example, yeah. I can use them. So a real estate agent right now could go outside into their area, into the suburbs that they represent, and you call them realtors, don't you? Not real estate agents, but a realtor could go out into a suburb and stand in front of a home they've just sold and do a selfie video of talking about why that home sold for a certain price. They could go and stand in front of a street sign in a suburb and talk about why this street is incredibly popular and houses always sell well. They could go and interview a, a customer, a client whose home they've just sold and get a testimonial all on their iPhone. And you know, you could go and do your first podcast interview using the voice memo function. You could 
upload all that to YouTube within a heartbeat. So I just think this is incredible. Um, people, you know, hesitate around all this marketing because they think they've got to get a fancy microphone or a fancy video camera or they've, no, they don't. One of the things we all laugh about the fact that Apple brought out iPhone seven, it's like big deal, right? It's just another, it's a better camera. That better camera and better microphone from a small business owner wanting to market themselves, that's actually a big deal. Um, for everyone else, it isn't. You know, who needs a better, who needs a better camera? But um, So my tip is to understand just how powerful a marketing tool your smartphone is and start using it. And, and I'll finish that with a, a little story to show the power of, of it. I speak at a lot of conferences in Australia and in some countries around the world each year. And... Um, I got asked to MC um, a, a very big awards night, one of the biggest business awards nights in Australia early this year. It was in 10 cities around Australia and I was up against um, a couple of other MCs who are a professional MCs. I'm not a professional MC. I'm a guy who loves small business. Um, and these other two guys were, ce were celebrity. They were, they were TV people. I'm not a TV person. And... I thought, I'm, I'm just not going to get this job. I mean, they've got, I don't even know why they're asking me. I had a moment where I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go down the street to the shopping center near where I live with my son. I'm going to sit in a cafe with the shops, all the, all the small businesses behind me. And I'm going to get my son to film me for a minute talking to the client. The client, I just said, g'day client. I didn't know the client. I was being booked through a speaker's bureau. I said, hi client, my name's Tim Reed. I'm really honoured that you've thought about me as someone who could MC your upcoming business awards. Um, and here's why I think I'd be a good choice. Now, Mark, I had a crow on the roof of the shop across the road going, rack, rack, rack. I couldn't get rid of him. I had noise. I had car noise. I had people walking past. I shot it on my iPhone. I sent it to the client. I got the job. And they said that video was the reason you got the job. They, it showed that you cared. We got to see you as a person, how you present. And I've got to tell you, the video wasn't that flash. It wasn't that polished. So it was just good content. So appreciate the power of your smartphone. Great tip. And I, I love the authenticity story too. And how the, the power of authenticity over, you know, professional polish is what people really want. They want real people. They want to connect. So Timbo Reed, phenomenal, phenomenal. So my tip of the week is learn more about Timbo at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com, smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. I will have the uh, link in the show notes. And uh, Timbo, are we good? Mate, I'm good. I reckon we've covered a lot of ground. I think any more and we will start to uh, send your good people, well, maybe not to sleep, but into overwhelm. And I don't want to do that. And uh, thanks for having me, buddy. Thanks for being a fellow podcaster. I always like to speak to fellow podcasters and I wish you and your audience all the best. No, I thank you. And thanks for taking uh, time out of your very busy day. And or actually, what time is it right now? It is 9.24 a.m. My day has begun. So your day, your, your day is beginning. It's only uh, 3.24 p.m. in Pacific Standard Time. And uh, so at some point today, I will, you know, in honor of you, have a Tim Tam. Because now I can get them here. Our Arnett's, uh, they have them like in these specialty shops. So You're a simple man, a man of the people, and that's why we love you. I, I really am. And my kids love them. And, uh, you know, I feel, I feel special. Like, hey, I know something you don't know, Yankee, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. To my neighbors, like, try this. Like, oh, my gosh. And for those of you who don't know who Tim Tams are, they're like the Australian or Oreo cookie. Like, they consume millions of them. Um, yeah. it, you know the it, idea of fighting... Uh, the diagonal corner right so you hold a tip and that way and you bite the top right and the bottom left and that becomes a straw from which you can suck your coffee through tim tam slam there you go I, I yeah it's on youtube all right so um go to the .com, learn more about me i want to thank the listeners and look the only way i can get the quality of guests like a tim reed who has the biggest marketing show, arguably in the planet, or at least part of the planet, 
is if you subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. It really does help. It takes about 20 seconds, but um, please do so. Uh, if you haven't learned about Loan Geek, just email support at blankgeek.com and uh, we'll get you a free demo of Loan Geek. I want to thank Tim Reed from smallbusinessbigmarketing.com again. Thanks, everybody. Let freedom ring.